hello friends how are you i hope everyone is doing good so today right we are going to discuss about microsoft fabric actually so what is microsoft fabric uh, so that's what the first video uh, with this video i am going to start microsoft fabric playlist so i will try to continue this playlist uh, to add all the videos in the sequence order one after another so that uh, we can be good with the microsoft fabric the entire product okay so let's try to understand what is Microsoft Fabric. We will try to see this definition first and then in simple words, I will try to explain it with a whiteboard software. This video will be almost like a theoretical video only. Uh, maybe from the next video, we will try to create the Microsoft Fabric account and progress from there. Okay. So let me read out this. What is Microsoft Fabric means is so Microsoft Fabric uh, it's all in one analytics solution for enterprises. That means everything which analytics need, right? That everything was put together. Okay. And uh, it will cover everything like uh, the data movements, the data science part, the real time analytics part and business analytics part, everything it covers. It offers a complete suit of including everything, including everything, what data engineer needs, what data scientist needs, everything right everything at one place that is called microsoft fabric actually uh, i will try to explain you this with little detail uh, not with this uh, definition so let me do one thing to explain this with little detail uh, let me go to whiteboard software and here uh, we all know that right uh, what is this uh, data engineering roles or data uh, related roles or data related projects right why we need all these projects is if you guys know uh, every business who runs the business, uh, there will be a leadership team, right? LT team. They will generally take some business decisions. Okay. So business decisions means uh, maybe let's assume like uh, if you are running a uh, shop, like retail shops, you wanted to now know that which product to keep in the stores, right? Which product to keep in the stores. So how you can take this decision is uh, when you know how your business is working, when you know how your product category is performing and in which branch how it is performing. So when you know all these questions and all these answers for these questions, then you as a LT team member, you can take a business decisions very easily that will actually help you to grow your business. Right now to uh, to get the answers for the business questions, right? It is not that easy because our business data may be available at 100 different places. If I am running, let's assume 100 stores across the globe, then 100 stores may be having a different type of data and all the data will be getting placed in different, different locations. So to answer a simple question also, I need to check the data in all the stores and then try to find, okay, so whether which uh, store is running well, which product is performing well, where my advertisement campaign went well, where is profits, where is losses. So everything to check that also we need to understand the data across the 100 different stores. Then only you as a LT member or leadership member can take the business decision easily that may help to grow your business. Okay, so this entire thing is called less like analytics needs. Okay, so every business need analytics uh, to understand how their business is happening accordingly to take the decisions. Okay, so now to do this entire analytics things, right? Uh, generally, right uh, from all the stores, uh, there will be data engineers will be there. They will take all this data from different different sources. So let's say you have different different sources and they will finally try to load the data into some data warehouses. Uh, maybe like uh, some SQL tables. Imagine like that. Okay, and right here from different sources when you are reading the data, the data will be huge, which is big data basically. Okay. The data various tables will not load all the data from the sources as it is. What is needed? What is the subset of the data? What is the meaningful data? Only that meaningful data or needed data will get processed from the sources and finally land into the data various tables. Okay. On top of these tables, Generally, people will create some reports like, for example, a, a report that will show like in which city, uh, how the revenue is growing. OK, how the revenue is growing. So the tables will act as a source for the reports to generate in the Power BI tool. So Power BI people 
uh, there is a software called power bi they will generate the reports by taking the data from the sql table and sql tables will contain subset of this big data which is coming from the different different sources finally these reports will be helpful to leadership team to take the business decisions okay so in this entire process right the people who create the reports they we will call them like data analyst okay so they can analyze the data and the people who take this data and finally land it into the data warehouses and everything right we will call them like data engineers okay so data engineers will take the data from different different stores that means extraction then they will transform it because they need only the relevant data right not every data will get moved there so so they will transform the data and they will they will finally load this data into data warehouse systems so that's how the things will happen so to do all these things right generally for to do these etl operations previously we need something called data factory and for the data warehouse needs right we need something called synapse okay in the synapse there is a sql part we generally need that not only that i said from the etl we will not load the data as it is into the data warehouse right we will actually do the data transformations data cleaning fetching the meaningful data so that part generally can be done using a spark so this can be done via synapse spark in the synapse also we have spark or via data bricks as well so in azure data bricks also we can do so if you and then finally anyways power bi is needed for the reporting purpose so we need data factory we need this spark part for the data transformation we need the synapse sql part for the uh, uh, for the data warehouses need from there we need the power bi to create the reports so there are so many things right not only that apart from this regular data let's assume there are some sensor devices related data uh, some observational data uh, maybe like uh, uh, how many employees are checking in checking out how many customers are checking in checking out some some sensors related data uh, or iot devices related data also uh, generally we will call them like observational data okay so that data may also help uh, to identify frauds and all so on top of that data also we need to write some queries actually so generally this kind of data we will keep it into custo clusters there is something called azure data explorer clusters there we will use this custo query language to query that data so this is this is called uh, this is called actually real time analytics okay this is called actually real time analytics so we need this real time analytics data as well okay so to do that previously we we have something called azure data explorer okay so maybe in many cases this azure data explorer you guys might have not seen it but generally to analyze the observational data there is something called azure data explorer which can query using the custo query language okay so even this custo is available as a separate service so if i summarize for a business to run and to see like how the data is flowing how the business is flowing take the decision and everything they need so many services they need data factory they need synapse service they need azure data explorer service they need data brick service azure data bricks service uh, they need sql service uh, i mean of course synapse itself will have sql so basically they need so many different kinds of services to fulfill their needs so that finally they can take the effective business decisions and run the business to by combining all these services microsoft created a easy product or a very helpful product called microsoft fabric so microsoft fabric is nothing but in short combination of all these services okay so that means if you have a microsoft fabric account then you can do your etl pipelines part that means your data uh, data integration part you can do this data warehousing part also synapse that that means the sql tables also available there for you you can execute a custo query language queries on top of the real time data which you are getting from the sensors and devices and uh, you can use the spark capability there for your data transformations that means data engineering needs so all this will be available at a single place and that product name is called microsoft fabric this is very helpful because end to end solutions are available at one place not only that uh, we are saying uh, data integration is happening data transformation is happening uh, data is getting stored into the data warehouse tables we are saying all this 
but where the data is flowing there will be something called gen2 storage azure data lake gen2 storage and so on that storage only data will flow uh, before transformation after transformation everything so even that storage account is also available in the microsoft fabric and uh, instead of gen2 we will call them like one lake there okay so there is a different name for that gen2 storage in the fabric which is called one lake there are some differences between gen2 and one lake but everything built on top of gen2 only we will discuss more about this one lake and everything in future so basically microsoft fabric is nothing but a product which combines everything what any business needs for their analytics purposes okay so let's go to presentation and uh, if i see here see microsoft fabric brings together existing components which is power bi synapse data factory everything into the single environment we no need to create 10 different services and try to manage them we no need that if you have only one product microsoft fabric that's enough you are job done so on top of that there are a couple of other capabilities also added in the microsoft fabric that is the reason they are using this new keyword there so uh, we will discuss that more in detail so for now you can imagine that way if you see this image uh, whatever i said right uh, it's the same thing actually so again see this microsoft fabric right it is actually a SaaS foundation we know that data factory and other uh, services are like platform as a service but this is like a software as a service everything is integrated and connected with a SaaS foundation uh, so you can call it like a software as a service a, a complete software a complete software for the analytic purposes built and given to the companies to run their business and create their end-to-end -end analytics projects there itself no need to uh, go to any different places and understanding understand the underlying infrastructure so all that needs are eliminated one product that will do everything for the data related job okay and if you see this entire microsoft fabric has something called one lake it's like a, a big a foundation it's like a big storage to do all these things data engineering things data warehousing thing and everything and uh, this was built on top of the gen 2 as i said okay so there is something called azure data lake storage gen 2 right so on top of that only it built so again if you if you are not getting what is data factory what is gen 2 storage so all these words right in my uh, data factory playlist i have already discussed so if you see there right you will get a better idea so uh, if you know my data factory playlist if you know my synapse playlist right uh, fabric will be very easy to uh, get the things okay it will be almost similar okay so now uh, if you see this image so microsoft fabric is a saas foundation which has a one like across entire capabilities and the capabilities what we get is data factory capabilities that means data integration the etl pipeline part we can create the etl pipelines and all uh, that means taking the data from different sources transforming and loading it so data engineering part means the spark part so we know something called apache spark so that help to do the big data analytics very easy right so that is the part now data warehousing part is nothing but like the a uh, sql tables part so on top of this sql tables only your power bi reports will get connect what is data science means uh, once you have the data into the data warehousing right uh, not only creating a reports using the power bi uh, you can create something like ml uh, models machine language models by and you can try to uh, educate these models or train these models with your business data so that models can start predict the future like they can start predict in next one year how the business will be based on the historical data so that data science related workloads also available in the microsoft fabric and this is something like azure data explorer like real time analytics adx kusto right i said right there is uh, if you have any iot devices sensors they will feed uh, huge amounts of the data that is called generally observational data so on top of that on real time then and there we wanted to write some queries and see how the uh, so whatever the needed things right so that that when that need is there when real time you want to query the data and try to see uh, how the things are working then best way is keep the data into the azure data explorer clusters and use the kusto query language there again what is azure data explorer i have a video i have a, some playlist with some videos so try to watch that in my channel okay 
So, and if you see this below image, right? So, uh, this is how the UI look like in the Microsoft Fabric portal. You can see Power BI is also available in the Fabric to do the reporting. Data Factory is also available for the data integration ETL pipeline purposes. And data engineering, that means like a data transformation part, the Spark and other computes are available for you. Data science, you can use the ML models there. You can create them. You can start predict the results. Data warehousing, I mean like same like Synapses, dedicated SQL, the data warehouse will be available for you. You can load the data finally there, then do the reporting. The real-time analytics means nothing but like a Azure Data Explorer Custo part. The sensors data coming and you are writing the Custo queries there in real time to analyze the data. Okay. And if you see this uh, another image, it is more or less same thing from the documentation. You see in the one lake only all the data will be resides. Whether you are data warehouse data, whether you are source data, everything, whatever you keep, you keep everything in the one lake. And as I said, it is a foundation on top of the Gen 2 storage account only. Okay, and if you see here in the one leg, that means it's a storage account, right? You can you may keep the data in the Delta table formats uh, and uh, if, which is inside the lake house or you can keep the data in the warehouses, right? Uh, or in the Custo databases, right? All this is possible and uh, what is lake house and what is the Delta tables and all I have discussed in a Synapse playlist. We may discuss here also, but don't worry. It is also like a kind of a SQL tables kind of thing for now. You can imagine that tables which are created in spark, but which have a SQL tables nature. That means you can update, delete the records and everything. Uh, but if you are in a hurry, you can check my synapse last few videos to know that. And uh, you see the compute what we get in the Microsoft fabric is you, you get a SQL compute. You, you get the spark compute. You get the Custo compute to analyze the queries and all even the Azure analysis services also available and it's the same thing. So in the Microsoft fabric like as I said data warehousing data engineering ETL data integration data science Custo part real time analytics part and power BI reporting part everything available at a single product in a single product called Microsoft fabric. That's why these two diagrams whatever we are discussing which are indirectly telling that. So in short, in a single line, if you guys want to remember or if you guys want to ask like if somebody asked you and you wanted to explain what is fabric, just say that like it's like a combination. It's a complete uh, new product created from a Microsoft that will give end to end analytics needs. Uh, you can fulfill there uh, all the data factory capabilities, synapse capabilities, spark capabilities, Power BI capabilities, everything put together and created one product that is called Microsoft Fabric. Okay. And uh, because of that, by using Microsoft Fabric, you are eliminating the need to maintain 10 different resources and try to stitch them together to make sure your needs or your project requirements go well. Everything put together. So there is there are a lot of headache was are uh, removed. You no need to manage many things. It is only single thing and the all the security things uh, cost, uh, the mounting the storages uh, to access the data from the storages and everything is very easy because everything put together and uh, properly blend together so that very easily you can control the accesses. You can control the security and everything. Okay, so when we progress over this Microsoft fabric this playlist we will get more and more idea and we will get a more visualization as well how the things are working there. Stay tuned. Let's meet in the second video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications whenever I add videos. Thank you so much.